professionals get better at what they do? How do they get great? And there are two views about this. One is the traditional view, that is, that you go to school, you study, you practice, you learn, you graduate, and then you go out into the world and you make your way on your own. That's how doctors learn. That's how、uh, lawyers do. Scientists. Now, the contrasting view comes out of sports, and they say you are never done. Everybody needs a coach. The greatest in the world needs a coach. So I tried to think about this as a surgeon. Pay someone to come into my operating room, observe me, and critique me. It seems absurd. Expertise means not needing to be coached. So then, which view is right? Turns out there are numerous problems in making it on your own. You don't recognize the issues that are standing in your way, or if you do, you don't necessarily know how to fix them. And the result is that somewhere along the way, you stop improving. And I thought about that, and I realized that was exactly what had happened to me as a surgeon. So I asked a former professor of mine who had retired.、Um, his name is Bob Osteen, and he agreed to come to my operating room and observe me. The case. I remember that first case. It went beautifully. I didn't think there would be anything much he'd have to say when we were done. Instead, he had a page of dense with notes. <laughs> Just small things, he said. Did you notice that the light had swung out of the wound during the case? Another thing I noticed, he said, your elbow goes up in the air every once in a while. That means you're not in full control. It was a whole other level of awareness. He was describing what great coaches do, and what they do is they are your external eyes and ears, providing a more accurate picture of your reality. They're recognizing the fundamentals. They're breaking your actions down, and then you build them back up again. After two months of coaching, I felt myself getting better again. And after a year, I saw my complications drop down. It was painful. I didn't like being observed, <laughs> and at times I didn't want to have to work on things. I also felt there were periods where it would get worse before I got better. But it made me realize that coaches were onto something profoundly. I think it's not just how good you are now; I think it's how good you're going to be that really matters. All right, excellent, huh? Such a a good、um, reminder of the the need for mentorship and all that we have. That we are so fortunate that most of it we can get for free through Optavia through our mentoring program. So welcome to our team time today is、um, Monday. It is January twenty third. My name is Dee Corchin, and I'm glad you're here for our weekly team time where we come to learn and to grow together. And I'm excited because tonight we've got a great topic. Uh, led by Lisa Bloom on working in the art of communication. So、um, Lisa's got quite a bit scheduled for us in this short thirty minutes. So you're going to want to be、um, in tune for that. But what I want you to do is, if you have paper, I want you to write one through four, one through four on a piece of paper right now. I'm going to give you three really important reminders、um, or things to know about. I'll give you the fourth one when when Lisa tosses it back to me at the end. Um, so the first is I want to make sure everyone is aware because there's so much going on that it can get a little bit confusing. Like what, which is what. So starting this Saturday, we have、uh, the Ready Set Launch Boot Camp. Ready Set Launch Boot Camp starts Saturday the 28th. This is an eight week boot camp that will be. Uh, broken up by where you are in the business, based on where you are, whether you're looking to grow to ED, grow to FIBIC, or grow beyond that.、Um, so it's going to be incredible. It's the first time we've ever had one that's really designated for eight straight weeks, based on your level.、Um, but it is important that you either were part of the launch to health、um, back on、um, what was that January seventh or January fourteenth that you were part of that, or that you purchased the recordings. And if you are not yet a senior coach, you don't have to purchase the recordings. They are free, but you do have to register. And that is in order for you to get all the preliminary information and get access to the Facebook group and the links to the the boot camp. So it's going to be great. This Saturday is on providing quality client support. So something we all, you know, it's the fundamental of our of our business. 
Okay, number two, launch to global. Launch to Global is a live event happening in Dallas, Texas, um, and the days really that most of us would be there would be on Friday and Saturday, April 21st and 22nd. So this is an in-person event um, designed for people who are executive director in, or higher the months of January, February, or March. So anybody on this call can qualify to attend it. Um, and if you qualify um, as your business leader, I will say attendance at events, especially um, in-person events is probably the game changer in your business. Um, so if you have any questions on how are you going to make that work with your schedule, finances, et cetera, just encourage you to get with your mentorship um, and we can talk or I'm happy to have a conversation, just talk about the value of it. Um, if you ask me what made the difference in this 12-year career, I will say in-person events um, for several different reasons. And then the last is um, the commit to health incentive, the $75 off and the 30% off, 30% um, premier credits for the second order. We have eight more days with this. Um, you guys have been incredible. We've helped over 201 people for new clients. I'm not sure how many of inactives have come back. It's hard for me to track that, but we're blowing it up blowing it up compared to what we've done in prior months, and we still have 25% of the month left. To give you a heads up, um, uh, I ran the numbers in the organization. We have 18,000 inactive clients that qualify for this incentive. So I am sending an email to all 18,000 on behalf of our um, organization with steps on how to place their order, redirecting them to you. Um, but just want to make sure nobody misses this. 18,000 people is a lot of people. So um, excited about that. So without further ado, number four still needs to be filled in. We'll talk about that afterwards, but I'll turn it over to Lisa. All right, thanks, Steve. That's quite a cliffhanger waiting for number four. All right, so I'll, all that's standing between you all and number four is me. <laughs> so, well, I'm really excited tonight. I um, One of the things I do, many of you may know, I'm also a life and leadership coach. And in my practice as a coach, I work with people to gain greater awareness. And it's, it's what we do. It's a nice marriage because we do that through our training with Optavia as well. So I work one-on-one -on -one and in groups with people, Ella, Amy Kemp, if, you, if any of you ever worked with Amy Kemp, I kind of do the same thing she does. Um, so we're going to have a workshop tonight. And I'm glad Dee asked you to write down notes because you need a paper and pen. This is an activity I actually usually do in person with people. So we're going to modify it for the virtual format. Um, I am not able to attach uh, documents to the Zoom. So we're going to, we're still going to be able to do this. We're going to do the best we can. Um, I had already modified it in case people couldn't pull the documents and anything I share with you tonight, I will also attach to the Facebook, um, the post, when Dee posts the recording, I'll attach it there. So you will have all the documents that I'm going to show you tonight. Um, these are some tools I used. I worked with a company called Change Strategies. Everything is uh, copyrighted in there, in the information. I'm just curious, and, and also before I get started, this is an interactive workshop. So feel free to raise your hand, raise your virtual hand. Does everybody know how to raise, who does not know how to raise your virtual hand in Zoom? Anybody, don't be afraid, because I'm going to tell you. Okay, so for those of you who raised your hand, if you look down at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should see going from left to right, it says mute, stop video. It, you might not have all these icons, but security, participants, chat, et cetera. If you go all the way over, there's a little smiley face with a plus sign that says reactions. If you click on the smiley face with the plus sign, it says reactions. Literally just above that is a long bar that says raise hand. So let's all practice that right now. Everybody click on that. That will raise your digital hand. And when you raise your digital hand, it pops you up into the upper left-hand corner of my screen. So that calls attention for me to you so that I call on you. So let's all raise your digital hands. And if you've got that down, then lower them. Um, so wanna make sure everybody knows how to do that because we, we will have opportunities to share. Um, all right. So in fact, we're gonna do it again. Oh, I, I think I'm gonna lower my own hand. Um, we're gonna do that again. If everybody would lower your digital hand, what I'd like to do next is ask you if, if you are familiar with assessments, 
in terms of personality or attitude assessments, particularly assessments that may categorize kind of your style into four colors, red, yellow, blue, and green. Anybody raise your digital hand if you've ever worked with an assessment that is like that. Um, there's one called the HBDI, the Herman Brain Dominance Instrument. That's the one I'm most familiar with. That's the one that the materials I have today are based on. Um, I'm curious. So Felicia, you raised your hand. Come off mute and tell me which one you're accustomed to, which one you've worked with. Um, I can't say the name specifically, but it uh, breaks you up into categories like um, charismatic. That's probably not the right. Uh, different categories, like based on your personality, if you're warm or hot or in between, and you can be crossover or being more than one. Yeah, that makes sense. And it, a lot of times these, there are categories, right? And there are labels. And just remember what we're trying to do is put language to something you can't really identify. So don't hold on to those labels too much, but everything has to be categorized. So. Um, who, uh, Diane, your hand is up. Which one are you used to? Which one have you experienced? Um, uh, Myers Briggs and um, Enneagram and the DISC assessment. Yeah, those are all fairly common assessments. Myers Briggs, especially, is used like both in the corporate and out of the corporate world. DISC is used a lot in the corporate world. Um, Connie, I see your hand up too, Connie Queen. I know you, uh, there's probably an assessment you work with or one. Which one have you worked with that has the kind of the four color combination? Do you remember the name of it? It's called the bank code. The bank code. Okay. I'm not familiar with that one. But as you can tell, there are any number of them out there. And everybody, everybody who has your hands up, go ahead and put them down. Um, as you see from all the hands up, there are a lot of them up there. And I've worked with many of them. And what we found is that these assessments are great. What these assessments do is they give us some additional information. They give us more insight into ourselves and they give us and, and and the key to operating you know being the dominant force in our lives is to have more self-awareness so these assessments can create a very full picture of you and there's also a way with, that we can self-identify for some of these assessments and that's what we're going to do tonight so the first thing we're going to do is select our perceived skills and strengths so with your piece of paper i'd like everybody to split a piece of paper into four quadrants. And I'm sharing an example with you, just a rudimentary one that I drew a couple hours ago. Split your paper into four quadrants and leave yourself enough room um, within each quadrant for two columns of six words each. So actually my, my example is incomplete because each square should have two lines of dots and you should have room to write in a, you know, two sets of words in each quadrant. Does that make sense? Sorry, my. So actually it's gonna look like, this is small, but if you see, you get the, you get the idea. If you look at my example, I'm gonna show that instead. So I could write a word here and I could write a word there. So every column needs space for 12 words and six, six at a time. And the formatting is important, y'all, and you're gonna see why in a minute. So if you just, if you just draw four squares and you have enough room to write two, you know, 12 words side by side, six rows of each in each column, then you're good. And don't worry about putting the dots in there, just make the four quadrants and you wanna have room. So the next thing we're gonna do, um, okay, bear with me a second. So this is the workaround I have with, with the pen and the paper. Um, all right, now I'm gonna show you a document that is all around your perceived skills and strengths. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna ask you to self-select your perceived skills and strengths. So don't pay attention to the um, instructions at the top of this document. Basically what I want you to do is in each of the four squares in the same order, choose three words from each square that stands out to you. And on your paper, you might even wanna put A, D, B, and C, if you can see kind of in the middle, 
you want it, you want the top left to be A, the top right to be D, the lower left to be B, and the lower right to be C. Kelly, you have a question? You have your hand up. You're on mute. Okay. Was it a lingering hand, a residual hand? Debbie, go ahead. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm following instructions. Mm -hmm. So in each of the quadrants, pick out three words, right? That I three words like that you feel best describe you. And where do I put those in the first column of my? Yeah. So you're going to write them in the same position on your piece of paper. Oh, okay. So, yep. So for instance, if in the top left, you choose assertive, you're going to write that as the first one. If you choose logical, you're going to put it in the second column in the third position. So wherever the words are on this grid that I'm showing you, put them in the same position on your piece of paper. Does that make sense? Normally I would pass out this piece of paper and have you all circle the words. <laughs> Catherine. Okay, so I'm picking three words total from this whole group or three, three words, words total top. from each quadrant. From each, each square. So yeah. So from words total. Correct. Okay. Yep. Three words from A, which is also blue. Three words from D, which is also green. Three words from B, which, or excuse me, D, which is yellow. Three words from B, which is green. And three words from C, which is red. and make sure they're in the same position in the quadrant. And don't worry if you can't find any words that you feel like describe you, or if you can only find one or two, it doesn't have to be three. What's going to happen is there's going to be a quadrant or two where you're going to look at the words and go, well, those all describe me. Then if they, you think they all describe you, pick the three that stand out most to you. And if there's a quadrant where you look at the words and go, oh, none of those really describe me, or maybe only one, that's okay. As long as you have three in one quadrant, you don't have to have three in any other. So don't be too attached to that. The key is really having them in the same position of the list on your piece of paper. And that's going to make more sense to you in a minute when I show you another sheet of paper that's going to look like this. All right, I'm going to give you one more minute to do that. Just take what pops out to you first. Don't spend, don't overthink this. So Debbie, you still have your hand up. Do you have another question? No, sorry, I just saw okay. that. I was like, ah, no, it's okay. Down. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> just making sure. All right, we good? Anybody need more time? I'm trying to, go ahead, Catherine. You have a question or you need more time? Just, just like 30 seconds. Sure. All right, looks like everybody's finishing up. You good, Catherine? Yeah, I can't see her. You good? Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop that one. Let me, okay. Let, let me just sort of lay the groundwork here. If you think about um, and raise your digital hands, if you've ever heard this kind of described this way, has anybody heard about a, a situation where you can kind of overuse a strength? If you have something that's a strength, and you are over indexed on it or you overuse it and maybe that 
feels like it becomes kind of a liability. Raise your digital hand if, if you've heard that before. Yeah, over kind of overusing a strength. Michelle, talk to me about what you've heard about that. Michelle um, Levy. Okay. Yeah. So like if you're over using it, it it almost becomes like a draining factor that there's like not a lot of balance and you're just, you know, I don't know if I'm explaining that right or not, that it's like, oh, she's the organizer. Give her to do that. She's always organizing. She's the one who can do that the best. And then that's all you ever get to do. And you just kind of get burned out. And there's not a lot of other things that, you know, you're just always doing that one kind of thing instead of using all of your strengths, right? And being more balanced. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one way that I've heard it described, right? If you just keep using it, using it, using it, you get, you get burned out. Yeah. Kelly put in the chat, overuse of a strength can become a weakness, can become a weakness. It can become a liability, right? Um, and if you think about that, 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 um, that example you gave Michelle about being organized, somebody who's not very organized or doesn't place a high value on organization, how might they see someone who's super organized? They may get an attitude. They may think, you know, that they may think, oh, she's always so this. Oh, she's always that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, she's so this. Yeah. So they can get an attitude. Yeah. She's bossy. She's telling me what to do. <laughs> okay. So that is a great segue to that. Everybody else can put your hands down. That's a great segue to this next document. So what I'm going to show you now is a document that is formatted exactly the same way. And what you are going to do is you are going to look at the position on the document and you're going to match the word that you chose in the first one that I showed. You're gonna match it to, or you're gonna find the same position to this one because here are the possible perceptions by others. So for example, if you chose assertive, which is in the first position in the top left box, a possible perception by others is that you could be pushy. If you chose logical, which is the third position in the second column of the top left box, or if you, ch you, you could be perceived as aloof. If you chose passionate, which is the top position in the left column of the red box, you could be seen as a zealot. So now take the words, if that makes sense, take the words that match, the, the position that matches, and write it next to or around the word that you wrote as your perceived strength and skill. Joni, you have your hand up. Did you have a question? Joni Russell, you're on mute. Oh, okay. I'll take that as a no, the hand goes away. That's all good. Okay, does anybody need me? And I can't see all of you, so just come off mute and say yes. Does anybody need me to go back to the original document in case you didn't quite get the positioning correct? You need to look at the original, the first document. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No worries. This is hard to do. And again, you're going to get these. So the important thing is, you know, you're going to know how to do this. So you're going to get the documents. Uh, but here's the original one, your perceived skills and strengths. So make sure you know, like, you know, which position it's in so that when I flip back to the other document, you can find the possible perceptions by others.
Okay. We good with that one? Now I'll go back to the other one. Just say no if you if you're not okay with that. <laughs> Cuz I can't see you all. I'm not okay with that. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> Just tell come back off mute and tell me when it's okay to move forward. Yeah, Julie Walker, detail viewed as anal. I get that a lot. I was thinking about the organized um, too, because often if you're perceived as organized, you're like, um, people think you're anal or in fact, it's organized on here. Organized, yeah, boring. <laughs> organized is boring. Yeah, I think so. it was, the, uh, the perception was boring, wasn't it? Mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> That's that. very funny. I'm very organized and I do not think I'm boring, but okay. <laughs> All right. Lisa, ready to go back? Yes. Lori Schiffman here. If these words are what pe how people perceive me, I'm going to quit right now. <laughs> Don't I quit. There's hope. I'm super there sad. is hope. Okay. Everybody okay with me moving to the other document again? Just I want to make sure everybody got the words. Yes. All right, so now you've got that. So let me just, I'm just gonna go back to this possible perceptions by others again to wrap it up. So just, again, don't spend yeah. a lot of time on this. Just make sure you've got the word that matches with your perceived strengths and don't like, and don't despair because this is all about awareness. And it's really about, when you think about it, it's about understanding that different people see things different ways, different people hear things different ways. So when you're communicating to someone, right? If you think you're communicating in a way that is analytical and direct and logical, they might see you as pessimistic or belligerent or aloof, right? And so it's really about being aware. And ultimately what we're gonna get to in a minute is, um, creating conversations, creating communications that appeal to all styles. So that's really what this is about. <clears throat> um, I, I think it's funny the, um, how you, if, you're, if you're spiritual, you're perceived as not grounded in reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that something? And again, this isn't, this isn't absolute. This isn't all people. This isn't all. These are possible perceptions by others, right? So it's just being aware that, you know, I'm out there being all passionate, enthusiastic, and excited about everything. And somebody's rolling their eyes going, oh my gosh, she's a zealot or overly confident. And, and no judgment here. No judgment. This is just, it's who you are and who people see you as or potentially how people could see you. Uh, if you chose passionate, there, there are nine people out of 10 might say, you're really passionate. And the 10th person might go, that, that's, not, that's not appealing to me at all. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna move on. So we, a couple of people have shared how eye-opening this was. I'd, I'd love to hear from somebody we haven't heard from yet. What, um, you know, what insight have you gained from this? What, Kind of awareness does this create for you? Anybody, you can either raise your digital hand or just come off mute and speak out. I'm, I'd like to say something. Yeah. This is George. Um, and it's so true. Like I said, this is very eye opening because I look at the part of being, you know, uh, helpful. And if you're helpful, then now they're calling you controlling. But I guess it's like long as you're helping the person and they're getting what they want out of it, then okay, that's good. But then when you're helpful and they don't need you help anymore, now they call you, you've been trying to control my life. You're trying to, that's just one of them. And the one about religion, I really was like, whoa, okay. So now we're out of touch with reality because we're spiritual, you know? So I'm, I was just kind of going through the ones that I was able to write down. And uh, I'm like, hmm, like you said, it's just what other people perceive. And right. so you could really, you could really get knocked off your rocker 
if you were to take the perception of what people really think about what you actually do or what you actually say, you know, yeah. to others. Yeah. Thank you, Joyce, for sharing that. Aggressive, controlling. Yeah, if you're aggressive, you're yeah. controlling, you know. Yeah. I'm through. So I'm looking at the time. I want to, you know, and I realize we're, we have like one minute left. I have two more documents to share with you all and I can go pretty quickly. And feel free to ping me or reach out to me, send me a message if you want to spend more time talking about this, or I'm happy to, you know, come back. But here's here's the thing. And again, don't pay any attention to the instructions at the top of this, this one. Well, actually, the top of this one could be situational. But when you're communicating with people, here, here's kind of, this is called a walk around the brain. Like people who fall into the yellow, I'm just going to use the colors. People who fall into the yellow quadrant often ask why. What's the big picture? What's the context? What other possibilities exist? What concepts does it link to or clarify? So if you're thinking about communicating, you really want to answer why, what, how, and who. You want to appeal to all of the people who operate from different quadrants of their brain, the people whose default is to ask why, my 25-year-old daughter, the people whose default is to ask what, my finance-oriented brother, the people whose default is to ask how, organized me, or the people who are really high in relationships who ask who. So you want to make sure that your communication is hitting all of these quadrants. And I've got a really helpful document for you that's going to help you make the connection. And this is, this is where you're going to look at this and say, if I want to better connect with my colleague, here's how I can operate. If I want to better collect with my colleague or what my, if I want to know what my colleague's triggers might be, or, and this can be also interesting and exciting for you to look at for yourself to see, Hey, how, how is my partner communicating with me and what, what color preference might they have? And how is my preference different from theirs and how can it impact our communication? As you can see, there's so much rich information here and more to share. And this was a total crash course for you all. But if you had an aha moment in, at any time in the last 20 minutes, raise your digital hand or choose a reaction in your Zoom reaction. Tell me if you had an aha moment and that this made an impact on you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you all. That was the fastest 25 minutes of my life. And I'm throwing it back to Dee because I know we're a minute over time. Wow. I think we're going to probably need a part two or a deeper dive at some point. You know, sometimes 30 minutes or 25 minutes goes so much faster than we think. Um, so yeah, some more work. Thank you, Lisa. That's fabulous. This reminds me of something that was offered through our church and she did the four colors and it was, I said this, you heard that. Um, and it really does matter, right? What the other, how other people perceive. So excellent, good, good info. All right, you guys. So we talked about the first three exciting things happening. Um, I hope you guys get the Optavia E newsletter. It comes out Mondays about 6 p.m. It is rich with information, but I was over the moon excited. Um, I had the opportunity about two weeks ago to meet with Nick Johnson and he was asking, what did we need? What do we need from the field? Um, what did I think was missing? And, and I have actually coached for a long time. Um, and at one point, um, and I don't know who remembers back when we used to have the Monday night calls with Dr. A, he used to be available to us. Um, and Dr. A is our visionary. I mean, he really leads with such passion. Um, and for you know various reasons, they had eliminated that. Well, they are going to recreate. Um, it, it's going to be new and improved. But basically, it's called the, the Coach Business Call. And it's going to be Thursday nights at 8. Um, and it starts February 9th. And it's going to be led by Nick Johnson and Dr. A together. So Nick Johnson, president of Optavia, and Nick Johnson to get, uh, or and Dr. A. So for those guys that want to, for those of us that want to grow, that that vision, that inspiration is what drives you. Um, and it's going to be driven a lot based on Q&A um, of questions that are sent in advance. So just, I'm ecstatic about it. And if you have never been a part of it, to be able to learn from Dr. A on, and uh, on a regular basis, it's going to be huge. So um, thank you again, Lisa. We'll see you guys. Uh, during the week, blow it up with the commit to health. You guys, so many people um, need what we have to offer and it's just fun to have this energy. So good to see you guys all on tonight. I'll see you in the Facebook group and we'll be, I'll see you in the boot camp on Saturday.